Greetings and welcome to Warrior's Path. On this February full moon, I'll be doing my first Toltec talk. I'll do a bunch of talks on Toltec perception, everything from Don Miguel Ruiz and the Four Agreements to a lot of the original Carlos Castaneda Don Juan teachings from the early, early books. This first Toltec talk will be called Beware the Black Magicians. Misconception, clarity, and our words as spells. So this all started from a message that I received the other day saying, Hail, I wonder what being a warrior and this teaching has to do with each other. Meaning, the Toltecs and Don Juan as black magicians. I wasn't really sure what was meant by this as it had been a long time since I had posted the quote once again, and we'll talk about this in the Four Agreements when I get into, um, I had made an assumption that this person was being negative and had some sort of strange story around Toltec magic and that it was some sort of black magic or some other mysterious thing. So I was puzzled by this and I asked for clarity. So. In my response, I said that I wasn't sure where he'd gotten his story or acquired the perception of this, but my experience in this realm is very different. What do you mean by black magicians? My experience is a path teaching freedom and empowerment. It has helped me and in turn helped many others. So at first I thought it was maybe a trolling comment and I wasn't going to respond or just delete it, but I wanted to check my assumption. I wanted to check for clarity and it turns out this person had read a quote that I had posted from Don Juan in the Warrior's Path group and was seriously curious, had misunderstood or didn't really understand where the quote was coming from. And so we proceeded to have about a half an hour long back and forth conversation um, clarifying the perception and clarifying the idea behind the quote and the story and ended up becoming really good allies and having a really good connection of understanding and sharing information together. So it's a good thing to check our assumptions. Make sure the story that we're making in our mind actually has some sort of reflection onto what's really going on. And the best way to do that is ask for clarity. So the quote that he referred to was, the average man is hooked to his fellow men, while the warrior is hooked only to infinity, quoted by Carlos Castaneda. Above that, I had posted a direct Don Juan quote that said, our fellow men are black magicians, and whoever is with them is a black magician on the spot. Think for a moment, can you deviate from the path that your fellow men have lined up for you? And if you remain with them, your thoughts and your actions are fixed forever in their terms. That is slavery. The warrior, on the other hand, is free from all of that. Freedom is expensive, but the price is not impossible to pay. So fear your captors, your masters, don't waste your time and your power fearing freedom. Don Juan to Carlos Castaneda. My understanding of this quote is not that we are surrounded by black magicians that wish us ill or wish us negativity or intentionally casting spells upon us in some sort of conspiracy, but that the black magicians are mostly unconscious, mostly unknown even to themselves, the magic that they weave. These are the people that gossip. These are the people that shame others for singing and dancing. When sh someone shows something of their artistic expression and they're shot down and shamed for the way they express, for whatever reason that other person feels a need to do that, those are the black magicians. Those are the people that if you're told your voice is horrible or your painting is bad or your dancing is quirky and funny and that you shouldn't do it anymore, if you believe these agreements, if you believe these statements, these curses that people cast, then they can affect the rest of your life. They can affect your expression, they can affect your freedom, they can affect your happiness. 
just by taking in what someone says and believing it. Now those are the small black magicians, the unaware, the toxic, the people that have grown up just being taught to be that way. The people expressing from their own shame, from their own place of brokenness and toxic scenario that they've grown up in. Those are the small black magician. Most of the medium to large black magicians also are completely unaware that they're black magicians. These are people in advertising. These are people in Hollywood. These are people in commercials. Um, not necessarily the actors in commercials, but the people writing these things. The people that make you feel body shame to buy a product. These are people that are black magicians on a grander scale. They're not just personal in they feel uncomfortable in your freedom and expression and therefore shoot it down for whatever damage they have. These are people that actually make money off of disempowering others. They're still not a shaman or a wizard casting black spells. They're perpetuating negativity. They're perpetuating disempowerment within our culture. And our culture is full of this. Buy this product because you're not good enough. Look this way because you're not good enough. Sound this way, paint this way, play this way because you're not good enough. And there's a product that can make you do that or help you do that. And so there's money made off of these curses, off of these spells that are cast. From there, there are the grand black magicians, usually more in the realms of politics and mass media, feeding on a similar type of thing, feeding on disempowerment and fear for them to gain power. Most of these people would not consider themselves black magicians. These are people casting curses, sometimes on a mass scale. The curse is if you believe the tale of disempowerment. If you take in and make an internal agreement that what they say is true and you're who they're talking to. And so this is where Don Juan says, don't trust the black magicians and we're surrounded by black magicians. It's other people caught in the trap of culture that feeds us disempowerment, that's been passed down sometimes for generations that shames and blames and takes power away. These are the black magicians not to trust, not to listen to. And it comes into the four agreements, which I'll do another vlog specifically on. But basically it comes into being impeccable with your word is one of the agreements. Being aware that the things we say are spells. We're casting spells every day by the magic of our ability to speak and form symbolic language that can affect another person's reality. If our words shame, blame, disempower, or reinforce disempowering agreements, then we are the black magicians. We are the one casting that spell that holds someone back. It's up to them to not take on the spell, to be immune to the curse which is another agreement called not taking anything personally in the realm of what someone says is their perspective, is their story, not yours. So whatever they say, whatever they express is about them and their world. If your dancing makes them uncomfortable and they shame you for dancing, it's not your dancing. It's not you and your expression. It's them feeling uncomfortable because of whatever agreement they've made that either they can't do that or doing that makes or seeing someone do that makes them uncomfortable. And then they feel they need to express that venom, that toxic scenario that's stirring inside them when they see an expression that stirs it. It's their curse that they're spreading to the world. So don't take it in, don't take it personally. That all being said, I feel like there could be a better term used than black magicians. Feel at that time and in that scenario, that was a reference point that Don Juan or Carlos Castaneda had for an idea. I think the idea is a metaphor 
more than a direct link to some sorcerer casting black sparrows upon you, which could be another talk of the practicalities and actualities of that, and the idea of actual curses, which I would do a vlog on my perceptions on actual curses in a magical practice, but that's a whole other story. In this realm, the description of a black magician is a metaphor. It's not actually a sorcerer casting black spells upon you. It's all of us. It's all of us as human beings with the ability to weave magic and power with the powerful symbols of our language, of our spells. That's why writing words is called spelling. It's spells that we weave with our words. We can create whole realities, whole perceptions, whole stories of life and belief with our words. So I would not necessarily call the people around us black magicians, either than for a symbolic metaphor. I would call them peddlers of unhealthy agreements. That's what they're doing. They're peddling an unhealthy agreement, and it's your option to buy it. Whether you buy that agreement, whether you pay attention to what is being said, you're paying your attention, you're buying that agreement that's being sold. So, the Black Magicians is a metaphor in most of the sense. Getting into real Black Magicians, which I still wouldn't call Black Magicians, I would give a different term because in my perception field, there's nothing wrong with the color black and there's nothing wrong with magicians. So, having Black Magicians be a negative term, there's tons of different symbolic ways that that could be interpreted just the term black magicians, someone that weaves in black magic, which is another topic we could get into of what is the concept of black magic, because there's nothing wrong with the color black. There's nothing wrong with darkness. There's nothing wrong with these things that have gained a negative connotation or a negative symbolism in Western culture that there's the beauty of the night, a nice starry sky or a new moon that makes the night dark and comfortable. There's the darkness of the mother's womb or snuggling under a blanket in darkness and feeling that warm embrace. Just as there is the searing power of light that in the, you know, the blinding shriveling of the sun, you know, darkness and blackness is not bad and evil, just like light and white is not good and benevolent. These are colors, these are two polarities of a natural spectrum. Both have negative aspects, both have positive aspects, both can have a healthy balance that heals and empowers you, and both can have an imbalance. So in wrapping up the talk on black magicians, misconceptions, curses, the idea of our words as spells, beware what you believe. Be careful what agreements you make. If someone's speaking to you and you feel their intention is not for your highest good or your highest empowerment and balance, don't believe what they're saying. Don't make an agreement with what's been said if they're speaking out of frustration, out of their own curse, out of their own inabilities, out of their own jealousy. Be careful whose advice you take and what agreements you make by the things people say to you. So the black magicians are those that gossip, are those that put you down, are those that say unhealthy, negative, nasty things to you. Those are the black magicians, and most of them don't even know they're doing it. It's just a habit. It's a toxic habit that is usually good to get away from or heal. So that's my Toltec talk number one, we'll get into the four agreements. Um, two of the agreements were touched on in this. A lot of Toltec magic can refer back to those four basic pillars of perception, the four agreements. So this is Heron Oshi on the full moon, recording this for you. I hope that this clarifies some things. Um, if it brought up any questions, feel free to ask down below or send me a message. And I'll be doing more Toltec talks on Castaneda magic, perception, and things like that. Have a blessed full moon, you all, and may you all walk in beauty on the warrior's path. See you next time.
subscribe, like videos, do things like that. This first talk will be entitled Beware the Black Mus Musicians. Chin, 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 chin. Black metal and the ch church burnings. That's a different topic. 